We're trying to unmute you too, Flavio. Yeah, there we go. Okay, is it good now? It's perfect. So I'm using two screens, so <laughs> just a sec. Hello, everyone. So I'm very happy to be here today. And first of all, I would like to thank you, Christiana, Stephanie, and Katrina for this invitation. And I'm excited to share with you some of the work that I've done during my PhD. So I divided this talk in two different parts. During the first part, I'll talk about specifically the taxonomic revision of the subgenus Zygoflaps. And the second part, I'm gonna talk about uh, some of my adventures here, collecting schizopterids in the Brazilian Amazon. So the infraorder Diptochromorpha are, are commonly known as minute litter bugs due to their small size range from half millimeter to three millimeters. And they are usually found in leaf litter, low herbaceous vegetation on the bark of pollen trees and in the canopy. And they are also known from all biogeographical regions with highest diversity in the new tropics. So I put this, these pictures here just to show you uh, a piece of their morphological diversity. This infraorder is currently divided into six families, 70 genera and more than 500 species. So I focused on the family Schizopterity, which is the largest diptochromorphan family. And it's currently divided into two subfamilies, Hypsilosomatini, the big eyed minute litter bugs, and Schizopterini. So I was basically working on this genus here within Schizopterini. The genus Schizoptera, which is the largest genus of Diptochromorpha with more than 130 species after this taxonomic revision for sure. And they are restricted to the new world and with the greatest diversity in the neotropical region. So if you're looking for some schizopterides in the neotropical region in the new world, you probably find, you will be probably able to find some, several of them, several of schizoptera specimens. But now the question is, how could you identify them? Just based on morphological features, uh, you need to look at the prothorax. So if there is this frontal color, uh, it's likely to be an schizoptera, but you also might look to the metapsternum. Oh, just a second. Oh, okay, now you can see. Uh, the metapsternum of these guys here has this postural lateral spine. They are also have this discal cell in a trapezoidal shape. They have the, the males have the subgenital plate, which is the septic sternite sinistrally asymmetrical, as you can see right over here. The pygophore is rotated 90 degrees dextrally, in, so in, for, more, for the great majority of the diptropormorpha, this pygophore is in line with the body plan, but that's not the case here for in, in, in Schizoptera. And also they have a pair of asymmetrical conjunctiva appendages. So we will talk about it later on. Basically they have this uh, small and left conjunctiva appendage and this right conjunctiva appendage, which is longer. And now you can see why they are called asymmetrical ones. Schizoptera is currently divided into four subgenera. The subgenera, the subgenus Cantherochorus, Odontohagus, Schizoptera, and of course the nicest subgenus here, the subgenus Zygoflaps. Now you know what uh, what uh, Schizoptera is. You might be wondering how could you identify some Zygoflaps specimens 
you just need to look at the following. Basically, it's the posterior membranal cell. If it's triangular, you jackpot, you got the zygoflaps. But if it's rectangular, it could be any other Schizoptera subgenera. So basically, this is the easiest subgenus of Schizoptera to, to be identified. So Zygoflaps was described by Mackinton and Malukin in 1925, just based on a second male from Guatemala and called Schizoptera unica. And after that, only in 1969, Amsley described three additional species, Schizoptera coralia, simula, and ultima from Trinidad. And after that, nothing more was described for this group for over 60 years until this work now. Then only in 2013, Christian and some collaborators uh, through this project here, the litter books, started assembling, assembling the largest worldwide collection of minute litter books with more than 50,000 specimens and more than 3,000 of these specimens belong to the genus Schizoptera and about 200 specimens of zygoflaps. So a couple of years later, I met Christiana through my advisor, Jose Antonio Marin Fernandes. And then we told her that I really wanted to work on Dipsorcomorpha. And she said to, to us, okay, there's a nice subgenus that you could do a taxonomic revision and also working on the molecular phylogeny. And okay, I'll, I'll do it. And then at the same time, I started trying to collect them uh, here in my, in my city, in my state, but I will talk about it later on. Then in, 19, in 2019, I got a Fulbright Scholar for a nine month fellowship to go to UC Riverside to work with Christiana and all of her collaborators. And there I started to work on zygoflaps, focusing on the taxonomy and phylogeny. As soon as I got there, I started working on my project and look at the material that she had there, some specimens that I've collected here before. And so this is the very first picture of zygoflaps, males of zygoflaps. And my first thought was, okay, they are very brown and similar. <laughs> so I knew that would be very challenging, but if you take, if we take a more careful look at those guys here, we can we might be able to see some differences that I'm gonna show you now. If we look closer, okay, now I think we can see some differences if you look at the subgental plate. So these projections here uh, would be very helpful in order to differentiate some species within this subgenus. So basically this projection here. So after that, I start to dissect in all of the female, all the males that we got, trying to separate them by morpho species. Uh, I, we couldn't separate them based on just on locality because it was a mess and I'm gonna explain you why later. But the picture that we got uh, a little bit later was this one. So all shapes of projections of the subgenital plate that I could imagine were there. So the needle shaped, some straight ones, pointed, rounded, curved. So we just figured out that there was a huge diversity within this subgenus. Uh, uh, some additional ones, uh, as you can see, and they var there's a huge variety here within this group. After that, okay, now I saw that there are several differences uh, related to the subgenital plate, so I started to looking at the male genitalia, 
which is very important to, to Psochora morpha to help us to differentiate species within a group. And of course, the subject template couldn't answer all of our questions because there were some tricky ones. So it's really hard to, to describe all of that differences there. But before I show you the how the male genitalia uh, is really different here in this group, I'm gonna show you the parts of the male genitalia. So if you didn't understand, this is the tip of the abdomen, and this is the pygophore, another picture of the pygophore and the parts of the male genitalia. This is a micro scan micrography of uh, Adiagus of Schizoptera. So we can see again the right conjunctiva, the left conjunctiva appendage, the right conjunctiva appendage, the vesica, the basal place, the conjunctiva. But if you pay attention here, <laughs> you might understand why it's so difficult to see the the limits of each structure. So I started to dissect in each part of the male genitalia. So first we have the ediagus, the vesica, actually. The pair of asymmetrical conjunctive appendages. So this is the left one, which is this guy here. And we have the right conjunctive appendage, which in this another species is this one. And also we had a pair of asymmetrical paramures, the left one and the right ones. So I started looking at this structure across the subgenus and I figured out that for most of these structures here, they, are, they were pretty similar. But if we look at this right conjunctive appendage, there was again, a huge diversity morphological diversity for in this group. So basically what we see here, if we stack, it's this structure. So for each specimen I dissect this all. And okay, now that you already know what uh, right conjunctive appendage is, so I start drawing it. And again, a huge diversity. We went from the simplest, which their leg spines, um, bifurcated ones, the ones that have like a spiral shape. So for each species, species we could have a different shape of the right conjunctive appendage. So finally, by combining this two uh, features, we can easily distinguish a species right now within zygoflaps. So this is a, just a quick example, Schizoptera aculeata, uh, which has this needle-shaped projection of the subgenital plate and this bifid right conjunctive appendage with a bunch of spines in the tip. And Schizoptera parensis with this uh, I don't know, heart shaped of the subgenital plate. And also there is a very simple right conjunctive appendage. During this work, we we're, were also able to describe for the first time the females. So the for, for this subgenus, the females are macropteros. There are several subgenera of Schizoptera in which the females are have like color beetle-like wings, the elytroid wings, which is really different in usual for heteroptera. And but unfortunately, I, I started dissecting some female genitalia, and I couldn't see great differences between species. So for this reason. Uh, just based on morphology, we were not able to distinguish these guys here. And for my surprise, while I was dissecting this female here, I found an egg. So now you you can say that you saw a dipsode egg. It's right over here. 
and also we describe the female internal genitalia. So before this work, uh, there was just two dots here, one point from Guatemala and one record for, from Trinidad. And now uh, we greatly improved our knowledge of the distribution patterns of this group. And so now there is records from Brazil, Bolivia, Costa Rica, Ecuador, French Guiana, Peru, Suriname, and you might you might see some weird things here, like this point. What are you there are oh okay. So there there was 20 new described species just in this place. And this was because of Dr. Terry Erin. So he was collecting in this place here called Orellana. Uh, using using this method here in the Pogin. So he collected hundreds of specimens and thank you. Thank you, I, I would like to thank him for that. Uh, also, this is, I'm gonna show you later. This is where I live. So I found three species here and three additional species uh, next to my city. And, but what we can say about this map, they are most likely to be wide, uh, widespread in the Amazon basin, but there is a huge lack of collection here. So we just need to go collect there and we will probably find several more additional species. I'm happy to tell you all that this paper was published last year and it was the greatest contribution to for schizoptera in terms of number of species described. So we described 36 new species for this group. So that's how we went from four to 40. So now before this work, only four species reported for two countries and now 40 species for recorded from nine countries. And look, we just look at two 141 specimens and half of this, these specimens were just females. So this is another point that we might think that there is much more to be described. But we looked at most of the material that we have across the world and across the world. And this is the only thing that we could find. Additionally, I'm working on the phylogeny of zygoflaps based on molecular data. These are working in progress, but, uh, and now we're discussing a few more things in order to publish. This is the, our phylogeny, uh, just a piece of our phylogeny. Zygoflaps is indeed monophyletic. And now we are trying to correlate morphology and the molecular data that we got. And so this is the end of the first part. And now I'm gonna briefly talk about schizopteridism in Brazil and specifically in the Brazilian Amazon. So the first question is, what do we know about schizopteridism from Brazil? There are currently only 32 species described from my country. And you might think, okay, that's not too much but I'm gonna show you how taxonomic, taxonomic works are very important in order to understand the biodiversity of a place. 21 species were described since 2016. So before 2016, for over the six years, no species were described from my country. So ever since Christiana and her team and I and Jose Antonio started working on Dipsos, specifically here in Brazil, we found out a huge diversity and there's much more to be described. I don't know, hundreds of new species that we had here in our collection. And out of these 21 species that were described during the, this past decade, basically, 18 were collected, collected in the Brazilian Amazon. So basically these field trip and collecting efforts uh, are very good 
to show us the, the real diversity of this group. If you want to see me, you can just travel to Belém, which is my city. I live in this part of the Brazilian Amazon. So you can see the Amazon basin here. This is my country, Brazil. And I'm gonna show you some species that I described for the, during these years here that I collected very close to my home. So this is a, a picture, a small picture of my city here. So this is a part of my city. And then you can see this huge park. It's a, a park from my state. And then this arrow here shows uh, where I lived. So this is my home, more or less here. And then this is the park. So I went there one day, okay, let's go try to find some dipsos. And then in the very first time I collected a new species and <laughs> it's, it was really, I don't know, five minutes walking from my home. And it, it, this is just to show you that we don't need to travel a lot in order to get really good new things. This is another picture of this place here. And this is a new species, probably a huge mosquito. I'm just kidding. And also we found out uh, a new schizopteran in general, genus, sorry. So Christiana knows what this guy is, but, ba but basically we also were able to find these guys in this forest, this is small forest. Going to another location, Paragominas, which is a five hour driving from my home. So my advisor, Jose Antonio, approved a project to collect some heteroptera in a mining company area. So you can, you can see that this is a really terrible secondary forest and because they extract, extract some minerium, I don't know, iron. It, it's not iron, I forgot the word in English, I'm sorry. Uh, so we, we went to the field, so we took some litter sifting traps, some, some light traps for over, I don't know, two, three weeks. And we were not able to get basically any dipso. It was really sad. We were not well succeed, but okay, maybe there's no dipsos in there. It's a terrible area. And then one day, uh, another professor called me. She was going to the same area to collect some mosquitoes. And she called me, okay, Fabio, can, could you go with us? Uh, I know that you like to collect some insects and then just help us, please. As I and I said, okay. And then she was basically used the CTC light traps, channel light traps, and then the CTCs, she set, set them up in, one meter above the ground, 10 meters, 20 meters, 30 meters above the ground. And then for my surprise, within one day, we got more than 100 species, specimens of dipsochromorpha. Include several specimens that I've described for, uh, of zygoflaps. So they really enjoy living in the canopy. And this is a really nice thing. So for example, if you just you at, this is my experience, sorry. If you just use the traditional light strap, they touch the, this shit here and then they fly. If you use this channel light strap, they usually touch here and then they start walking, climbing, and they really love to stay here. So you just need to go there and collect them all. So in more than in about, I don't know, one week, I collected more than 300 specimens. So that was the nicest thing that I've, that I've seen during this time that I've been working on Dipsos. One of these is one of the specimens that I've collected, I named it after Christiana, so Vorago Chorus were okay, uh, from this same area here. So now Christiana, if you want to, 
collect them again you just need to go to this place and I, and then i can go with you for sure i'd love to <laughs> uh and finally uh i was invited uh, to collaborate with this, this paper so some of my some friends of mine uh got this net geo grant to collect in some brazilian amazon savannas so whenever you're thinking about uh amazon you think just in huge trees a beautiful forest but there are some areas like these ones here too and then he installed some light traps and he collected several specimens of Dipsocormorpha too, schizopterdi specifically. So we described in, in this paper three species of schizopterdi, and I had the honor to also to describe to name it one species after Josella Grazia. Okay, I think that's it. These are my acknowledgments. I would like to thank you all, Christiana. Jose Antonio, Alex, that helped me a lot. This is Fernando. Uh, I miss you all <laughs> for sure. And I'll take any question you might have. Thank you.